Father God, we just, I just ask this morning that these words be your words and not my words, that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart are acceptable and pleasing in your sight, because you are my Lord and my strength and my Redeemer. Amen. So a lot of people have looked at the sermon title and said, what in the world is he talking about? Is it chemistry? Is it calculus? What is he going to talk about? So I have props. I don't think it's coincidence that we've already heard the term salt and light this morning. Salt and light changes lives. And a disclaimer that this formula is not original to me. Uh, it was published in a book back in 1994 called Becoming a Contagious Christian by Bill Hybels and Mark Middleburg. And full disclosure, Bill Hybels has stepped down from leadership of his church several years ago uh, after some accusations of perhaps impropriety or whatever. Um, do with that what you will. And I think while his actions may color our perceptions of what he says, they don't change the truth of the scripture. <clears throat> and I apologize for the voice. So first we begin with context. Jesus is early in his ministry. He has been teaching and healing all over Galilee, preaching the good news of the kingdom of God, telling his listeners to repent for the kingdom of God is near. That is the good news, that the kingdom of God is near and that they are able to be a part of it. And that is still the good news today that we get to be a part of the kingdom of God. Jesus starts his teaching out this day by listing the steps or the stages of becoming and being a part of the kingdom. To first be poor in spirit. That is to realize that what we are and where we are is not a part of the kingdom of God, which is sad and that we need to be a part of it. Life is not complete without it. He goes through being sad or mourning our place, being humbled by that idea that we can be a part of the kingdom of God, then hungering and thirsty to be a part, understanding that we need to be merciful as a part of being kingdom citizens becoming pure in heart and peacemakers until finally the best part is that we get to be persecuted because we are a part of the kingdom of God. But notice that the promise at the beginning to the one who is poor in spirit and to the one at the end who is persecuted is the same. The kingdom of God is theirs. The nation of Israel has been waiting for centuries for this to happen. Sign me up. Wait, he said persecuted, didn't he? That doesn't sound like the kingdom they were expecting God to institute. But rejoice, you're going to be persecuted but here, but your heavenly reward will ultimately be worth it. So this is where that annoying voice in my head says, what are you going to do about it? Jesus says, go be salt and light. Reading from Matthew 5, verses 13 through 16. And this is the Christian Standard Bible that I'm reading from, so it may be a little different. <clears throat> you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt should lose its taste, how can it be made salty? 
It's no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A, situated, a city situated on a hill cannot be hidden. No one, puts a lamp, no one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket, but rather on a lampstand, and it gives light for all who are in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Salt. Why salt? What was Jesus thinking about when he said salt? Which property did he want us to consider? Well, the answer is yes. For clarity, so you deep thinkers don't go too far off the deep end, we're talking about sodium chloride, you know, salt, table salt, sea salt, 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 salt. <clears throat> salt is very stable. Once that molecular bond has been formed, it is very difficult to break. And when that bond is formed, a considerable amount of energy is released, which it means it takes a con same considerable amount of energy to put it back together or take it apart. Salt doesn't easily burn. When you see videos of salt burning, it's generally just the impurities within the salt crystals that are being burned. Salt melts at, a, melts at a temperature of almost 1,600 degrees, and it boils at over 2,665 degrees. Gaseous salt, that's just what you need, right? And not to jump into the once a Christian, always a Christian debate, but it seems to me that once you have been truly regenerated by the Spirit, and then have that Holy Spirit within you, that is a difficult, if not almost impossible bond to break. It is not impossible, but it takes work. And God is certainly not about to give up and just walk away from you. Salt is also seasoning. We put salt on food to enhance its flavor. Even chocolate chip cookies taste better with just a pinch of salt. Being a Christian, life isn't bland. Would you rather live a life that looks forward to nothingness? We are living in the expectation of heaven as a part of the kingdom of God, even if it means dealing with some persecution in the here and the now. Salt is a preservative. We don't think of it as, as much today. I mean, we have refrigerators and freezers and processed foods that make them storable. But it wasn't that way a long time ago. I was going to mention some names. I, no, I'll just get in trouble. But the best way to preserve something was to salt it down, to draw all of the moisture out, which would allow this food to spoil and help it to last. The gospel message does that too. It preserves us. It draws the parts out of us that will spoil our relationship with God, the sin, and allows us to be a part of the eternal kingdom of God. Salt makes us thirsty. When you have something that's salty, you need to drink more. They tell me that's why they put free pretzels and salted peanuts on the bar to get you to buy more drinks. Shouldn't people who encounter us want more? Shouldn't we create a thirst in them to want to experience the life that we have? Salt has value. Once upon a time, people were paid in salt. To be worth your salt was to be worth what you were being paid. Our word salary comes from the old word that meant payment by salt. The gospel has value. It transforms lives. It redeems souls. But salt has its limitations. Too much salt makes something bitter, inedible. I mean, have you ever accidentally put a tablespoon of salt where we were supposed to put a teaspoon? I have. I'm not sure why, but. But knowing how much to salt, how much to season matters too. Is there such a thing as being too Christian? Maybe. Being an example 
of life in Christ, a life of faith, is far better than just shoving religion at someone and hoping they see the truth. And we are not meant to be salty, just salt. Salt is, salty is being upset over little things, being angry, sometimes for no reason. I mean, Christians never do that, do they? They're not playing the right music this week. Gosh, I wish the preacher wasn't talking so long. Salt is corrosive. Just ask anyone who has a boat or spends a lot of time near the ocean. It attacks and damages everything eventually. People can be corrosive too, imagine. I don't think you're as good a Christian as I am. We should just wipe out all those people because they don't believe what I believe. Corrosive. All of these apply to salt. <clears throat> we are to keep all of these in mind when we think about being the salt of the earth. We are to emphasize the positive traits while being aware of the negative ones. And when we come across the negative ones, that we are to offset them with the part of the journey in the Christian life that says, blessed are the humble and blessed are the merciful, and blessed are the peacemakers. So there was a formula that, that says my title. HP plus CP plus CC equals MI. What does that even mean? So the first part is bracketed HP plus CP. High potency and close proximity. High potency, HP, close proximity. High potency. For salt to be useful, it actually has to be salt. There has to have been that bond formed, and then we have to go out and be salt. Real salt, not some salt substitute, Mrs. Dash. Salt. Often in the olden days, people would add, put additives in the salt they were selling it, cutting it with things that looked like salt, but weren't actually salt. That's salt that's lost its taste. This salt that never was salt to start with. It has to be the real deal. Our lives have to be authentic. They have to be spirit-filled. and They have to be drippy. different sermon, I know. We have to be high potency because low potency salt doesn't cut it. None of this, I'm going to be a Christian, but I'm going to be quiet about it because I don't want people to persecute me. You are blessed when they insult you and persecute you and falsely say every kind of evil against you because of me. Be glad and rejoice. That is high potency. There is no doubt that you are salt. Close proximity. For salt to be useful, it has to be close. Salt over there does no good for my corn on the cob that's over here. To take it one step further, salt in a container is not useful. This salt, it's lovely salt, but it's not doing anybody any good. Just like Christians here, it's okay, but it's not the end. What matters is what you do when you leave the container, when you leave church. You need to be in close proximity to the things that need preserving, the things that need seasoning to make people hunger and thirst for the righteousness that comes from God. Well, how about light? Unless the electricity goes out, we really don't think much about light. I mean, we can walk into a room and flip a switch or maybe use an app on our phone to tell it, turn the lights on in the house and, and there's light. Or even at night, you can walk through, you know, it's, you are, would be surprised how much light is put off by the, all those little devices and gadgets that are around our house. And you can, and until the electric is out, oh, it's really dark then. Light back then took work. 
Getting something to burn to make light took effort, and it wasn't something that anyone took for granted. And if you didn't have the means, you just existed from sunup to sundown. John 1, 4 and 5 says this, In him was life, and that life was the light of men. That light shines in the darkness, and yet darkness did not overcome it. Light chases away darkness. Light exposes things that are hidden in the darkness. Light makes it so we can see. And oddly, the first thing that we often see is the sad state of our existence. And then we become poor in spirit. And then humble. And then, and then. Light also makes it so we can be seen. A city situated on a hill cannot be hidden. I'll repeat something I used at, the, at our closing at Bible school this summer. The light from a candle can be seen in the right conditions from about 1.6 miles away. That means if there are no obstructions, if you're high enough to eliminate the curvature of the earth, there's no trees, there's no, it's dark, there's no moon, there's, it's dark. All the electric is out. I could stand on the top of the church and at the farm rate building could see the candle. Light can be seen as long as it isn't hidden, put under a basket, disguised, shaded. We don't want to be too bright of an example, do we? I mean, yeah. Do. That is our purpose, to be a light so that others can see. You are the light of the world. And I don't think it matters if you picture it as us reflecting the light of Jesus or if it's the light of Jesus shining out through us. What matters is that we are to be a source of light for others. To be put on a lampstand for all to experience. But with this understanding that we are in the light, people can see us. They can see how we live our lives, the things that we do, which often speak much louder than the words that we say. We have to walk the walk because people are talking and watching. Our children are watching. Our families are watching. Our coworkers are watching. Granted, some of them may be watching to see if we fail and maybe even hoping that we do. Others are watching to see if we really believe what we're saying. If we are living as citizens as of the kingdom of God, as children of God. CC in that formula is clear communication. Are we clearly communicating with our actions in the light for all to see the good news of the gospel? That the kingdom of God is here, it is available, and it is waiting for them. That it won't be covered up by the darkness. Even more, are we allowing the light to shine wherever we go? Or are we just letting our light shine brightly here in this context, only to turn our lights out when we leave here. Because, well, I don't want to blind people or distract them. Or worse yet, have them actually watch me and look at me. They might see me that I'm not perfect because I'm not. Or am I afraid that they won't really see Jesus shining through me? Or am I worried that they will persecute me because the dark does not like the light? High potency, close proximity, and clear communication. So what is the sum of the equation? Am I? Maximum impact. Changed lives. 
Pastor Steve said it this way at conference, the wonderful grace of Jesus should transform our lives and our churches so powerfully that people who encounter us cannot help but come face to face with the message of the gospel. The wonderful grace of Jesus should transform our lives and our churches so powerfully. High potency, that's high potency. That people who encounter us, close proximity, cannot help but come face to face, clearly communicated with the gospel message. That is our purpose. That is what we are supposed to be doing. We aren't supposed to just stop at the part where we get to be called the sons of God or get hung up because we are being persecuted. No, our job is to go be salt and light, to make disciples, to share the good news that yes, you too can be a part of the kingdom of God. No matter how dark you think the place that you are in is, the light will still shine there. But why? In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Or is it this that he says in chapter 6? Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. Otherwise, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. Which is it? The answer is yes. See, I didn't mention the downside of light. Sometimes we focus the light very tightly and very brightly on ourselves. It becomes a spotlight. Some of us don't mind being in the spotlight. See me, see what I'm doing. It's all about me, me, me. That's your reward. Maybe a few likes on Instagram or a few retweets, whatever. You're left chasing the spotlight and the attention. Once the focus becomes us, it cannot be anything else. Our purpose in life is to bring glory to the Father. We are meant to glorify the Father. We need to be doing the things that we are doing, living a high potency life in close proximity to others, clearly communicating the love of God, the good news of the kingdom of God, so that all the others will see all of those things and glorify God because of them, not because of me, because of God. There is no other way to change lives. We are celebrating communion today. We are remembering the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. We should also remember the life he lived as an example to us. A life as salt and light. A life that was very clearly high potency, in close proximity, and clearly communicated. I encourage you, no, I challenge you and me to go out and be salt and light. Be salt and light in a world that so desperately needs preserving, that needs seasoning, that is thirsting for the good news and that is cowering in the darkness because they don't know that there is light. Be light, be salt, glorify the Father, and change lives. Let's pray. Father God, I just need you to be in me, to fill me so that your light can shine so that I can be that light, so that I can be salt for the people around me who need you so desperately. 
Help us to be that. Help us to make it about you and not about us. That it is never about me. Use us in a way that spreads your kingdom, that spreads your gospel, that spreads the good news that we all could be a part of your kingdom. Help me to be salt. Help me to be light. Help me to glorify you.